Very interesting. It being time, officially, I'll call this meeting of the Committee on Rules, Ordinances, and Orders to get together. Order us together. Um, and you've got our, we've got our, because not at home. Count of members taken. So I'm going to announce that we have, we're making an audio recording. We're making two video recordings, and we're taking notes. Wow. So anything you say will be beautifully recorded a bunch of different ways. Um, the next thing would be public comment, <clears throat> though I do want to tell the members of the gallery, most of whom I think are here for stormwater, that in all likelihood we are going to continue it in ordinance till after the first of the year. Because there are a bunch of forums happening next month, there's all sorts of continued exposure to the, to the public going on, and rather than deal with it. I mean, we still have to vote to do that, and you still have your chance to make public comment if you wish to, but I would suspect tonight we're going to kick it forward to, to the first ordinance committee of the new year to let all of that due process take place before we, you know, get it on the council agenda and get it out of ordinance. So, and uh, there are, I think, a bunch of notices going out with the DPW mailer when these meetings are going to be. I think everybody's word, the people are teaming up and covering the meeting, so. We'll probably just keep it here till after the first of the year to let that due process take place and then and kick it off from there. So with that said, anyone who would like to make a public comment, please come forward, speak your piece, and let us know who you are. <coughs> Hi, I'm Bob Rickman. I was for 15 years a member of the World Public Works, half of that time as chair. During which time we built the, the new water treatment plant up in Haiti. Um, we, I was in city council. I was on the stormwater task force at the chambers representative. We, the delay you speak of, David, we welcome. Nothing wrong with that. It gives plenty more time to get the word out to people who, who don't know. So that's great that you have a real active plan to do that. Um, we too, the chamber is going to have a forum on stormwater for commercial property owners. One's going to be on December the 9th at the Senior Center at 6 p.m., and there'll be another one scheduled. So we, we're trying to do the same kind of thing by letting the public know about what this is all about. I served in the task force. We did a good job. BPW translated our desires and guidance into a fine ordinance. We, on the whole, think the ordinance has its stance. It's very good. I believe the Councilor Adams has proposed five amendments, all of which, in my opinion, support and enhance the functioning of the ordinance. So we would encourage you to improve on them if you can, but we would hope you would take action tonight to accept his formal amendments so that they could be part of the public discussion going forward. Um, so. And we have the Chicago Gothic Street for example. Um, I, I, I'm also speaking on the stormwater and flood control of utility ordinance. I'm supportive. I've seen the amendments Councilor Adams has support has uh, put forward. I'm supportive of those. I have been a part of an informal group of the chamber that has been looking at this issue since it uh, came up, and. Uh, uh, the key, I would just like the Ordinance Committee to remember when looking at it, is it's very important to remember that this is a fee uh, and not a tax because it's perilously close to the line depending on how it's defined and implemented. Um, and obviously as a tax, it's not only subject to challenge by people in the city who would challenge it, but also the restrictions of Proposition 2 and a half. But one has to be cautious with that. I think the principal guiding lights that we looked at when we were reviewing it all the time was that it remain a fee, despite it being broad-based, uh, and that it remain equitable uh, for all property owners in the city. And I think that that, uh, with the Department of Public Works hearings, the way they drafted it, uh, they have been very good at doing it. One of the principles we tried to look at was make an essential uh, unit being uh, a single family or two family home. That way, with the city council in charge of the fee, even though it's a fee, it's not being set by someone else that would be burdensome on the individual homeowners. Any fee is going to be burdensome. 
Um, but at least they had the opportunity to look at that feat in the context of a single family home, which will then translate into what the fees would be for the rest of the users. So the way it's been crafted uh, is very good. I think the amendments are appropriate to maintain the status of RFP. And as you move forward, uh, I just ask you to keep those uh, two things in mind. The equitable nature of it in terms of its division against all, uh, against, assessed against all property owners in an equitable fashion. Uh, and that it uh, remain a fee. Thank you. Um, well, hold up. Yeah, do you want to go? Yeah. Is the body back there over the podium? Yeah. Suzanne. <laughs> Sorry. The woman behind the podium. The woman behind the driver. Yeah, that was. <laughs> so, good evening. I'm Suzanne Beck. I'm uh, representing the Greater North, uh, Greater North Hampton Chamber of Commerce. I'm the resident of North Hampton Road at 600 North Hampton Road. I just um, thank you for the opportunity in the new year to really vet this out with a, a broader kind of public input. But I wanted to kind of stage how um, the ordinance as it's crafted with the Chamber Subcommittee and Economic Development Committee for kind of the elements of it that are um, the foundation of that support. One would be that the ordinance does use the hydraulic acreage model um, the other would be that the city is participating as a fee paying member or uh, part of it. Um, that no general fund relief is um, provided for in the ordinance or the way the ordinance is structured. It provides, um, it's not looking to pr provide general fund relief. That the rate setting authority is separate from the management of the enterprise fund and um, that there's a cap on the amount of cost per year. And as we've worked through the process um, and kind of evaluated all the different uh, pieces to the ordinance, I, I think we can fairly say that any kind of shift or replacement of any one of those kind of foundational elements to the, or, um, to the ordinance would, in our view, potentially disrupt the equity and the, the fairness of the ordinance as a whole. So um, I'm pleased that the public education process is, is opening up and going forward and taking its time. Um, the one issue that we uh, that remains kind of un, unresolved from our point of view is that the there is no database that is accurate enough to pr to project for an individual property owner, commercial property owner, what their fee would be. And in our opinion, it would be best if the database were as as the ordinance is being reviewed, the investment in that database happens so that property owners can get an accurate um, read on what the fee would be. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Mr. Biden. <clears throat> Thank you. Lee Biden helps kind of stamp my lead. Um, there's been discussion about these so-called exemptions in terms of equity. Um, I just wanted to suggest you think about two different kinds of exemptions. The first is cities properties, where I understand the argument about not relieving the city of its, its fair share of uh, stormwater, which I understand. But the other side, open space parcels, whether they're publicly protected open space or privately protected open space. And I guess I'd argue that exemptions is probably the wrong term for that. There's a concept of ecological services, that open space actually reduces the amount of stormwater infrastructure we need and, and flood protection we need. Because open space is fine for floods, it's fine for the stormwater collection. So if you decide to drop municipal properties from being exempt, I understand that. And I think stormwater can <coughs> still be not exempt, but getting credit for the ecological services it provides. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a question for you, Mr. Fyke. Yeah. It's the first time I've seen this large club back here. <clears throat> and it says, Planning and Sustainability, City of Northampton. <laughs> You might, you might want to check with Alan to see if you know you really want to identify this. It's coming from your department. Who knows what could happen? In terms of planning. <laughs> um, anyone else for public comment? Going once, going twice. All right. Thank you. Um, Councilor Freeman Daniels wanted us to talk about his committee quickly, but. I think we're going to get through the other things quick enough that maybe it'll be okay. Um, yeah, so the, the next item on the agenda is the stormwater thing. And 
Do you want to run us through, just so it's of, on record, of the amendments you proposed to that, and then we can decide if we want to incorporate them before we refer it? Um, and that will get it on, on the video so that people will be able to watch it. Yeah, just read them and describe them. Yeah. Okay. Um, amendment number one, it states amend section 280-4, the definition section, by adding direct costs shall mean the costs incurred in the operation and maintenance of the stormwater and flood control utility, and indirect costs shall mean employee benefits, insurance, and costs paid by the city of Northampton separately that are allocable to the direct cost of the stormwater and flood control utility. That <clears throat> amendment, um, the intent of that amendment is to be consistent with what we've told the public since the beginning of this fee and to be fair to the public and not change in the late stages of how this fee will be used. This fee is, we've heard from the beginning, is not to supplement the general fund. It's supposed to be uh, solely for the purpose for which it was created. That's for stormwater and flood control maintenance. And this clarification of the definitions um, makes it clear that that's, that's not only the intent but the outcome, uh, that, that, that that will be the outcome, that this um, is to only be funding the direct and indirect costs associated with the fee and nothing more. Um, <clears throat> Amendment number two, it's section 280-8. And that's um, that's the purposes of the fund, and that and um, it, what it does is deletes the first sentence and replaces it with the following. The first sentence reads: uh, Receipts from the stormwater and flood control utility fee shall be based, uh, excuse me, shall be used for the following purposes. It strikes that and replaces it with: The stormwater and flood control utility fee shall only be used for the direct and indirect costs of the utility, including, and then it lists the exact cost that can be used for, and that um, really completes um, and, and, and is an aid to the, the First Amendment. Um, the Third Amendment is 280-6, and it's rates, and it deletes subsection G of that section, which reads, calculations of bills for each property shall be, de be determined by, by the Department of Public Works, and replaces it with G. After calculating the billing rate per square foot of hydraulic area in subsection D, the Board of Public Works will establish a unit rate for each of the three classes of small residential properties in accord with subsection C. So that way it actually codifies that there will be three classes of, of residential pro properties in the ordinance itself, uh, which is actually a very important amendment. Uh, 280-6, um, <clears throat> subsection A, I've, I've changed it so that it, so that it reads, uh, the annual budget for stormwater management and flood control services shall be based upon the recommendation of the Board of Public Works and shall be approved by a majority vote of the City Council. Um, and there's a reason why I did that, and it has to do with uh, the cap that I later drafted. So I'll explain that when I get to it. But that, that's how that, that's what I'm going to get to read. And 280 dash 6, uh, in the rates section, 280 dash 6A, beginning of the second sentence, it says, it is the intent of the city council to set the annual budget at an amount that will be sufficient to provide for a balanced operating and capital improvement budget for the stormwater management and flood control services. I changed that to uh, we're proposing to change it to the city council will set the annual budget at an amount that will be sufficient to provide for a balanced operating and capital improvement budget, budget for the stormwater management and flood control services. 280-6, uh, I amended rates, but I'll actually skip that because it kind of gets subsumed to, to 8, which I did more of an overhaul of the, of the, whole, of the whole section. <clears throat> So I'll come back to that in a, sec in a second. 280 9. I amended that to, well, I, the, the proposed amendment is to delete it in its entirety. And that's the section on 
um, exemptions for <coughs> exemptions. Do you want that here? This is the existing yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. This is the this is the um, the section that attempts to create an exemption for agricultural conservation. Um, I think it should be stricken in, in its entirety. And the reason why is that we heard over and over, and I agree with this premise, and I think the entire task force did, that everyone benefits from stormwater flood control. That's every parcel, including um, agricultural land and conservation land. And there was a very clear um, mandate from the, from the task force that all properties should pay. There's that they seem to be, I believe, in unanimity, unanimity about that. Um, and that includes nonprofits, federal and state properties, and even the city. So I don't think that an exemption um, from agricultural or conservation land uh, makes any sense. I think it's treating them like the others are not being treated. I don't think it's fair. And and on top of that, the maximum they would be paying would be $100 per property. That's maximum. And on top of that, the BBW can issue credits when it, when it, when it, when it creates its, its credit, um, when it decides who and uh, which properties will be eligible for credits. So if, that exa if, if, if this were not stricken, as I'm recommending, um, that would be $17,000 out of the budget um, and so it's not nothing. That seventeen thousand dollars would have to be um, subsidized by the, by, the, by the parcels that are actually paying into it. So um, I, I, I respectfully do not think that there should be an exemption for those types of properties. <clears throat> the final um, amendment I'm proposing is um, I'll, I'll leave it out and then I'll explain to it. I'll explain it. It's 280-6 rates, and, and again, it has to do with, um, th this has to do with caps. Section A, an annual budget for stormwater management and flood control services shall be based upon the recommendations of the Board of Public Works and shall be approved by a majority vote of the City Council. The City Council will set the annual budget at an amount that will be sufficient to provide for a balanced operating and capital improvement budget for the stormwater and flood control services. For the first uh, B, for the first five fiscal years of the utility operation, the revenue raised by the utility shall not exceed two million, two million dollars per year. Beginning in the sixth year, revenue shall be adjusted based on the recommendation of the Board of Public Works, subject to the approval of the City Council as described above. As described above. The annual budget will not be raised by more than three percent of the budget of the prior fiscal year without at least six votes of the City Council. So, the purpose of this amendment is to create a cap after the five-year period expires. And the reason why I'm suggesting we do that is because I think the public, and this is based on a lot of the feedback I've, I've heard, um, does not want this to increase, this fee to increase dramatically um, throughout the years as some other fees have, for example, the stormwater, uh, excuse me, the uh, water and sewer fees. So. But this, the reason why I crafted it this way is because it attempts to balance two things. I believe um, out of the seven communities in the state that have created this type of fee, two or three have already gone back to, the, to, the, to their legislative bodies that created them and stated that the revenue coming from it is not enough. So I wanted us to, I want to have a cap in place, but also give, allow for the flexibility for that cap to be exceeded if there's a good enough reason. And so, um, I suggested that the budget be allowed to grow by three percent each year, so it can keep up with, um, with so it can grow and keep up with with actual costs. But um, if it has to go over that for some reason, for some project that comes down the line, or for whatever reason, it can go over that amount. But it needs six votes of the city council, a supermajority, so that would be an additional safeguard on on um, on, on it going up uh, too much and too often. Um, it can only go up once a year. And so I picked a number of 3%, and there have been some good ideas floated out there about changing that to something um, something, something else, some other, some other measure, for example, um, inflation or, some, or something like that. So I'm open-minded to considering um, something else besides 3%, because the 3% might be too infle inflexible. Uh, but those are my amendments. Thank you. Um. I'm going to just ask, is there, 
since these weren't really all that available, is there any comment on these, public comment on these, prior to our discussing them? Anybody want to comment on these changes? Can I just yes, come forward and... I just have a, I ask you a question about point of order. Will the committee be taking a vote on the amendments tonight, even though it's, the hearing's going to be continued? Um, we, we certainly could take a vote on the amendments. We're not going to take a vote on the entire proposed ordinance. Yes. You know, and that's well, something we're going to discuss now, but I just want to move forward anyway. Yes. The ability to comment on them now. I'm going to clarify, too, that um, while, this, while this body could have voted to um, send this with a recommendation to the city council um, with, with all or some or, or part of the amendments, it, it still then gets voted on. It still has to, the, the amendments still have to be accepted by the right. council. Right, I understand. And then other steps. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Susan. So, um, I just want to say that the, these amendments help to clarify some of the gray areas in the original draft of the ordinance. So from the chamber's perspective, they're, you know, they improve upon um, the ordinance and make it much clearer as to the purpose of the funds and how the um, annual budget is set. And so. and, oh, yes. Okay. Uh, very briefly, I know I, I won't. I probably will not be on the. I will not be on the council when it comes before you. But uh, I, um, I just want to briefly recount what happened at the Economic Development and Housing and Land Use Committee, um, where uh, Councilor Adams shared many of his amendments at, at that time as well. Um, I don't think there was. Uh, I don't think there was a majority of interest in the uh, uh, annual cap. Uh, after the, five, after, after the first five years. Uh, and I also um, do not believe that there is a majority <coughs> interest in, um, in the, uh, the indirect and direct cost language. Um, it was it's my belief, and I think also the belief of at least one, possibly another counselor, that uh, that language is um, confusing and vague and uh, does not uh, adequately address the city's needs and uh, doesn't allow for the streamlining of government. Um, and, uh, and so I, I wouldn't, ex I wouldn't uh, think that the councils would be well served by adding that language. And, um, and finally, um, I've said this before and I'll say it again, uh, uh, general fund relief is going to be a consequence of this um, fee no matter how you slice it. And um, I don't see that as a negative at all. Uh, I don't. I, I, I hear the arguments that uh, that it's a negative, but I don't think that they are, and uh, I don't agree with them. Thank you. My name is Jack Boyer. Uh, in a previous life, I was finance director for the city, and I, um, also in a previous life, I was treasurer of uh, Hampshire College. And I've been involved with the task force of the um, chamber. And um, I wasn't going to speak because it's all been very well covered. But um, respectfully, Owen, um, I do think that the issue of general fund budget relief is a huge issue. And I think it's very important that that language gets put in there. For people like me, we've, we've talked now for months to many people in support of this ordinance. And a fundamental premise has been from the beginning that this fee is for stormwater and flood control management. If, in fact, it morphs into something where it's general fund budget relief, it will amount to the council being able to vote to, for funds that are tantamount to a two and a half override, providing direct general fund budget relief. And I think that is going to be a challenge to continue to garner support the way we have. We have a lot of momentum going. There's been a lot of great work done. And I encourage everyone to hold this path and not complicate it in ways that need not be. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Biden, you were... Uh, I just want to add to one thing about the uh, drop exemptions for open space. Conservation Commission did vote to urge you all to keep that in the air. Agriculture Commission has not discussed the piece about undeveloped parcels, but we'll be doing that this morning at their meeting. I, I think part of the issue is a lot of the changes which sound really good are about adding clarifications. Those two changes are leaving, there won't be clarity until the Board of Public Works acts in terms of the credits. So
Uh, all right. Any other comment on the uh, proposed uh, amendments? Well, hearing none, let's uh, discuss them. Um, it was my sense that, um, that well, I thank you, Councillor Adams, for doing all the work on putting these together. I am um, uh, reticent to take action on these um, before we have heard from uh, the other committees. Um, well, certainly, the new commission is one that's, to which this has been referred. And then, as uh, Mr. Biden mentioned, there's still the Agricultural Commission to hear about dropping. You know, so there, there are pieces of these amendments that I, I would rather um, hear from other bodies first, as our usual practice is to be the last body that, that deals with these. So I would like to hear not only from those other um, bodies, Agricultural Commission, even the Board of Public Works, I haven't heard a, a, any input from them on these amendments. But there are also the number of uh, community forums scheduled next month at which it would be helpful to have these uh, <coughs> amendments also uh, available and uh, open for discussion. And then I'd, I'd be fully prepared to act on these together on the forums uh, in, in the next term. I, I have no problem with that. One thing, one thing I wanted to clarify was um, I have a completely different take on what the end loop committee um, thought of these amendments because I was there too, and it seemed to me like Councillor Freeman Daniels and another councillor certainly did um, share what Councillor Freeman Daniels um, spoke to. However, one of the councillors wasn't present, and the other councillor was chairing the meeting. I didn't get any sense that he shared any reservations about any of these amendments. And on top of that, they sent it forward with no recommendation and and, and, my, and, and they wanted more discussion on the matter. But if they were against it, they could have they could have uh, given a negative recommendation, which they did not do. So uh, my perception of, of the Ed Lewis um, take on this was entirely different. And we can look at the minutes and see the video, was there audio and video recording of that? Okay, so it seems like that's all. And I have no objections to one through five, which really function as clarification of the intent, I think, of what the ordinance was. But um, six to cap, um, seven deleting nine, and eight dealing with the exemptions. Um, well, I think they should be made available. I really, I'm not comfortable making those changes here without another, without the next month's feedback. I, I don't think the first ones, they clarify where we are today. The others make substantive changes. And while I may end up agreeing with them, and I would like them to be available for people to discuss, I don't want to do it before it gets its next month full of process. Though, it, it you know, as, uh, as has been mentioned, it may well be what makes this, in the end, palatable to the greatest number of people is the assurances that there is a cap and, and the restrictions on exemptions. But, but I, you know, so if, if, you, if you wanted to do the first five, I'll, I'll go along with that and vote for it. Uh, but I, six, seven, and eight, I'm not. Again, I prefer to just take the whole package with the, with the ordinance mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. All right. Rather than, mm -hmm. I, I think it confuses the issue to try to piece you up a lot and, and uh, Time to give them that list. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> so back to our agenda. So at this point, um, since we're not going to amend it here, uh, I would accept the motion to continue uh, this ordinance until the first meeting of the newly constituted ordinance committee in January. And we'll uh, February. Yeah. We don't mean yeah. Well, just to the first, well, the first meeting, whatever it may be, of the new ordinance meeting in, in, uh, in the new year. It makes sense to the meeting in December, right? I don't mm -hmm. think so. Oh, okay. There's nothing else comes. Okay. And uh, we're you know, not before we're not meeting before the meetings happen. The community forums. The com are all. Yeah, the forums are going to happen well into the, the month. Second, the third, the twelfth, and the summer. I was Another just thinking, if we were going to meet, we can just continue it again so we don't have to yeah. continue it so far out to February, but if, if we're not going to meet till... I don't think we are, because if if, if, um, if nothing gets sent to us that we have to act on, we, that we wouldn't meet in December, so it would be our fir the first meeting of the newly constituted Ordinance Committee in the new year, okay. and we'll take it up then, and then all the feedback will be in. Oh, and that makes sense just because we know that the community forums that are scheduled are, are scheduled at 
at a date later than our next meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then they'll be done. So do we have a motion? Uh, so moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the next, the next one should be should be relatively quick too, and these are a bunch of ordinances and orders relative to our reorganization and having our rules conform and our ordinances conform with the new charter. And the only one on here that, uh, th this is something that uh, the first batch, I think we can just send to council right away yeah. as group. And then this, the, the last one, which is um, the Committee on Investigations and Practices, I think we want to talk about. But all of the, everything but Committee on Hearings, Investigations and Practices, I think we can just, if you agree, just forward. Yeah, uh, I move that we uh, send the positive recommendation to the City Council ordinances, amend 44-3 to amend 44 finances. Okay. Any discussion about that? Do you want to clarify to the December 5th meeting? Or to the December 5th meeting at the City Council. That's when all the other are showing up. Um, Changes okay. Yes, yeah, Okay, then we'll be together. Okay, you comfortable with that? Yes. Okay, any more discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So that brings us to our last item, which is the Committee on Hearings, Investigations, and Practices, which was sponsored by Councillor Freeman Daniels, which is here. And he is here. Would you like to speak to this? Yeah. I hope we didn't keep you two extra long. No. I was one pretty quick. No, I, but you did catch me on, on the mic now, having to put myself out as far as the uh, as far as the stormwater fee, which I wouldn't have, <laughs> wouldn't have done if you had me in earlier. <laughs> but, uh, I, um, I crafted this, and I spoke about it actually uh, in the middle of this year um, during an, an ordinance committee meeting that wasn't, uh, that, that where, where Councilor Carney wasn't uh, present. And um, it, uh, the idea is to uh, is that the the rest of the council committees have been um, rewritten and uh, and consolidated uh, by, by Councilor Adams, uh, and they're all they all follow this um, this uh, template that um, that the culture and rec committee um, thought, uh, began, which uh, Councilor Carney and, and Councilor Adams and I uh, sat on, and um, that is this uh, pattern of. Um, Using the council power to investigate, uh, but limited to the, the to the role of whatever that committee happens to be. Um, so uh, it's basically uh, treating the committee like a, uh, um, a, a like having a particular warrant on the town, a standing warrant on the council to do an investigation along the lines of whatever it is that uh, that committee is about. In the case of the culture and rec, it was cultural services. Um, so uh, what that what that left out was um, the the desire to have any kind of um, council discussion uh, or committee discussion outside of those um, rather uh, fixed uh, committees. Um, so I uh, wanted to um, leave a general power of investigation uh, to a committee in, in order to free up time on the council on the general council floor. Uh, from um, that kind of uh, um, that kind of uh, presentation and discussion, in order basically to basically to save time and do business more effectively. Uh, then, also, we, we often talk about um, uh, we often have this issue with when it, sometimes when it comes to um, the city council with uh, with some with resolutions and also with uh, hearings, uh, public hearings and and, um, and forums. Where we would like the council to um, have some um, discussion about an issue, but we don't necessarily want to do it on the council floor with full, with all the councilors there. Um, so the the uh, desire to um, plan effectively, plan a forum effectively, to possibly even review resolutions, uh, we could have even a committee that, that this would be a committee that could also have, um, be a public uh, sounding board uh, for for resolutions that the, that the council might not be ready to fully endorse, and also to have um, be charged with, by the full council, um, a general uh, um, power of investigation, 
which it wouldn't, it's not like this committee would just be able to do whatever it wants. It would typically would have to be referred by the council. Um, so that just, the, all those desires put together into this committee, which, um, which was, which just sits before you. Uh, so my hope is that, uh, um, my hope is that this committee becomes a, a part of the council. Uh, my expectation is that it won't be, uh, it won't meet very often. Uh, it'll meet when there's a need, um, when there's a call for it. Uh, either the council wants to look into something that doesn't fall into the purview of the normal committees. It wants to look into, for instance, the practice of, of selecting auditors or something like that. And it just doesn't fit in any one committee. You refer to this committee, which is sort of a catch-all uh, discussion and investigation committee. Or um, if we're having a, a forum um, that needs planning and, and, the, and we want to sort of act as a clearinghouse um, and we want to do it in public rather than behind the scenes, uh, you could refer to this committee. Uh, uh, and it can also be used to, uh, to formulate some additional best practices if, if those uh, become important to the next council. So um, my hope is that the ordinance committee just include this with the rest of the council committee packages. Thank you. And I'm available for more questions. So it's it's um it's a standing committee, not an ad hoc committee, but it doesn't meet regularly. It, it meets when there's something specific <clears throat> to that committee that comes up. Right, that'd be the idea. Right. Mm -hmm. Or as I read it, it's also it has a number of um, conditions where it could meet. One would be at the request of two members of the council, or whether so there are a number of um, criteria that kick off, and and also when they choose to meet. I mean, they're, they're not prohibited. They could meet as often or as infrequently, there isn't any, any set number of Right, I, but although I think that that was kind of, uh, I just basically took what we had put for all the other council committees, <laughs> which is basically, you know, um, at the, you know, regularly, but not specified how often. Yes. So in that respect, the format is very similar. But in a sense, it, it, it acts as if it's, it, it acts almost as an ad hoc committee, even though it's standing. Yeah, I think that's the yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, please. And and uh, so so if it's going to be used for the investi investi investigatorial purpose, uh, this ordinance requires that they give notice seven days in advance and specific questions to to which um, the presenter needs to give answers to. So it's not really something that can be used to you know throw curveballs at someone or, or, or do some sort of like gotcha game, right? And did you take this from the charter directly? Uh, well, um, good question. And I think um, I think that the council with the new charter has the general issue of figuring out the role of its committees. Uh, um, they, uh, they can be construed broadly. Uh, but the committees, the culture and rec committee, after some discussion, we had some some very good discussion, I think, on culture and rec, which which I think was before most of the other council committees were rewritten. And the discussion was that um, the committee, although sometimes it doesn't always um, meet or whatever, it, it has a vital role, uh, and that role is that when you need to, when when you want to be able to get to share information from one body of government to another from the executive branch to the legislative branch, um, that, it, that it's, it's ready and, and sitting there and ready and ready for that. And so we took the charter, uh, I took the charter language and put it into the committee um, for the exact, in that exact way, basically. Um, and um, so it, it is taken from the charter. And it's according, it's following all the charter rules regarding investigations. Um, <coughs> For example, you know, if, if, if you wanted to learn about, uh, in culture and rec, for, for example, you wanted to learn about the use of the fields, of a certain set of fields, you have to write them up, those questions, and send them to the appropriate person, and a copy to the mayor. The mayor part is not part of the charter, but we put it in um, in order to uh, make sure that uh, all the best information is presented. So the mayor can say, well, that person probably, maybe not the best person to present it. So the mayor can marshal more information for you if necessary, uh, or have different people come. But when those people appear before the, any committee, any committee, 
they are not required to answer anything other than what's here. Yeah. Um, so that it's not possible to, um, yeah, it's not possible to, uh, to stray from the, from the written um, language. Uh, unless the, unless someone wants to volunteer more information or whatever, but it wouldn't be part of that uh, of that presentation. Uh, and that's part of the charter. And um, I think it's very valuable for our other committees to have that power, uh, which is used much more softly. It's much more it's used more informally. Um, this committee, I think, would, would probably not use it very often. Um, but uh, if, but if, if there's any type of investigation or discussion that wants to take place that's outside of the normal committees, <laughs> that's what this one's for. It could conceivably, the city council now could ask any of its standing committees to investigate anything within their jurisdiction, I'm assuming. You know, so if it was, they could ask, like, potentially finance being asked to look into, Auditors. The, you know, or, or to look into, came from the meeting yet, look into the concept of a residential exemption. They could say, finance, look into that and get back to us. I mean, so the function kind of can happen now if it falls within the jurisdiction of an existing committee that's working on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, please. But I think sometimes we do have situations we don't know really where to, I mean, I guess with the invest investigatorial powers that's true, but sometimes it seems like we have uh, certain certain issues that we don't really know what to do with, right? And that, that's, is that the purpose of this? Or the cross boundaries. Of Right, I think that's, I mean, the case, I mean, the case sometimes with, when you have, um, well, for example, the, uh, um, for example, the sidewalks, the, the uh, vibrant sidewalks resolution, uh, which I was, you know, I was supportive of, but we, we ended up referring it to a committee, the EDLU, but we didn't really want EDLU to discuss the resolution exactly. We wanted them to prepare kind of a forum, which we're still in the process of, but the point is that EDLU didn't, wasn't exactly designed to do that. So it would be better sometimes if, if we have a kind of a, mm -hmm. a, a controversial resolution or something, it could be referred to this committee so they could they could interact perhaps with the, the Human Rights Commission and perhaps with other members of the public to, cre to create some kind of consensus to send it forward or wherever. And, That's true. And, you know, resolutions don't fall into, typically, they don't fall into any one of the council committees. So. Yeah, and, and with many of our bodies being like Edlu, where they're composed of, you know, members that aren't necessarily council. Well, yeah, you may want to keep it. Also, I, I, I do like that there's uh, an emphasis on uh, practices and best practices, since that was a, a focus of the city council a couple of terms back. And um, it seems to have kind of fallen by the wayside. It would be good to have a, a committee that kind of keeps those. And, and just one comment from me, and then there's one thing that I want to look into further. Um, I'm not really comfortable with this committee being able to activate itself with its own vote, but that it be, you know, so rather than having a majority of the committee say they want to investigate things, I like it a little more when it's authorized to do so by the full council, assuming it's only a majority of vote of the council it takes to get them going, but it's more a it, to me, it's more a, you know, you've been authorized by the full body to go do this rather than two of you deciding, you know, two of the members deciding, let's go after this. And the other, the other thing that I do want to talk to the solicitor about is, is what I see as a potential separation of powers issues in two, because, you know, the committee can require employees to come in. And that's sort of a separation thing. The employees work for the mayor. We don't supervise them. And that does concern me a little that we would getting, be getting involved with directly scrutinizing a city employee when, in fact, our chain of command says we go through the mayor who goes to the department head who goes to the employee. And I think before I really want to, to move this forward, I really want to talk to the solicitor about does, what effect does that have on our relationship with the mayor's office and that chain of command. I mean, certainly if the solicitor says, you know, you're perfectly fine. You know, other legislative bodies do it all the time. You, know, you see them, you know, the feds, federal congressional committees drag in and work over, you know, federal employees all the time. That's part of what makes, keeps C-SPAN in business, you know, is, the, is that high drama. But I'd want, like to see if it messes us up. Can I, can I make just to sure. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I agree. Um, but the, 
let, let, let's make sure the committee doesn't run wild, you know, because it can. It could, if it, especially if it was politically motivated. Um, the second one, uh, I, I don't have no objection to consulting with the solicitor, but it is one of our chartered power, one of the council's chartered mm -hmm. powers to call any member, whether it be an employee, actually, a committee member, a, a, you can call a member of the, a one member of the planning board or any member of a multiple member body, conservation commission, or employee, or the mayor. So it, um, they are, it's, and the, the charter says you can, that, the, that the council has the power to do that. So um, I don't think the solicitor would have an objection, mm -hmm. but I definitely understand that you want the majority of the council to be charging the investigative power. So I have no problem with that first part. Did this come directly out of Charter 2-7? Seven, seven? Yeah, it's, it's almost language? word for word. Okay, I mean, so it, basically, I copied the culture and rec one, which became the general ones for all the council committees, which I then just copied for this. So it's, it's almost word for word, I think, with a little bit of punctuation change. So I, I believe we have the power. I don't ex we put the piece where the mayor is notified in there so that the mayor can the mayor can say, well, you know, we're gonna I'm gonna be there or I'm gonna send my department head there if you want to talk to the lowly clerk, you know, the lowly, you know, um, you know, parking collection attendant. Well, I'm gonna make sure that the heads of the departments are there too, mm -hmm. um, which is which is I think the I think appropriate actually. It's the part that when we were talking about it for the culture and rec, that's what the solicitor recommended. So that's what we put in. Or the solicitor said basically similar things to what you said. Then we checked the charter, and it was, although legal, we, we thought, let's everybody play nice. Let's make sure the mayor knows what's going on. So that's kind of how that, how that happened, the evolution of that. Any other? Thank you. Well, thank you for staying around. Any other? I would like to add, I know uh, that that first change there doesn't seem to be an objection to. The second change I really I do still worry a little bit about that relationship between the council and the city employees and clarification of it. Could, is it possible to send it forward and flag Alan Sewell's attention to it for his opinion? Or, or do you want to keep it in this committee? so that he can look at it. Because it wouldn't then go with the other pieces that go before the council, the December 5th meeting. And that might put a, I mean, how does that, how does that affect this if it ends up being, or is there another, is there another meeting in December? Yeah, there's the mm -hmm. But the, yeah. we were, we were talking about, I mean, it would kind of kick it in the next year because we were talking about not meeting in December. Which would mean oh, so it would, so so it, yeah, would so it would reappear on, as, on the first agenda of the new year. Would you be comfortable hearing the solicitor's um, um, thoughts on this at the city council meeting? Or maybe even before, if he does have something today, maybe to say about, it, maybe he can give us a, a brief memorandum as soon as possible, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or uh, um, council, look, councilor Barge hasn't said it, had anything to say. It, so. I want to echo what Councillor Murphy is saying. I really feel I'm a little susceptible about the language here, about the employees. That's what we have a city solicitor for. I would like to hear from him also on the conditions of this ordinance. Councillor just let me just, just remind you. The, the, this is this is the language that the council already passed for culture and rec, and is going to be considering for all the other committees come December. Mm -hmm. um, and I can show you my emails between the solicitor and myself, where he yeah. he had he had a similar issue. Yeah. It turns out that it is completely within the council's power to do so, mm -hmm. uh, and we added the mayor mm -hmm. because be, because of that that concern. So okay. I, I don't I, I mean I think. Um, my, my request is that this go with the rest of the package, uh, and I'm, I'm very confident that your concerns will be mollified. But, but the other issue, I think if you could amend that tonight and strike the majority members mm -hmm. or whatever, then I'm, that'd be great. Also, also I, uh, it's, uh, I'm not concerned about it because it's directly from the Charter, but if there is concern, that's why I think you know, maybe the best way forward is to, is to 
send it forward yeah, so I can ask and, and, right. and, and, and have a solicitor mm -hmm. way just to, just to yeah. get rid of any concerns so if there's there any. What, what I would be comfortable with, we, we amend one, as we've discussed, and then we send it forward uh, to appear on the council once a memorandum from the solicitor is attached to it, and we know that will happen before the end of the year, yeah. especially if the, if the solicitor has already dealt with this, then the solicitor is going to be able to attach an amendment saying yes or no or touch the language up or whatever. So it has a chance to get out of here this year. So do we have a motion to uh, amend one to strike or when a majority of committee members votes to investigate and that way it would only come? Move to strike one. Second. Okay. You good with that, Mary? You know what we're doing? Oh, I'm married after city council. Yeah. On the city council. Yeah. All right. We... And that was a motion? Yeah. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. <clears throat> and then, is there any problem with... Uh, I have no problem if you want to move this so long as it reaches council when it has its attachment from, from Alan that he's good with the language. Do you want to specify December 5th then, like the others? Yeah, and that would give them time. That would give them time. Though I do want that memo to be there so that we're comfortable that the language it works for him and everything. And it should be, he should be able to do it if he's already, you know, Councilor Freeman Daniels has already had this discussion with him and he's, it's going to be a quick one, so. I move to send this call to the full city council with a positive recommendation to December, is it 5th or 7th? 5th. December 5th, uh, provided that the solicitor has an opportunity to uh, look at it before that point and address any concerns that he may have. With the, I would say address the specific concerns that were raised. In, in, a, in number two. Yeah. yeah. The rest of it seems to be fine. All right. We're going to offer a uh, motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And back to our agenda. That is everything on our agenda. We pick it here. So is there any new business with any members? Uh, then a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.